All right, welcome new VOD viewers. Hello. Uh, we're doing more of this. I just finished Dark Souls Remastered. I gave that a 9 out of 10. Uh, yeah, it's a good, good ass game. All right, I'm scrolled up too far. Let me see. Third Strike. What do I think of that? Third Strike, also like a 9 out of 10. Recommend? Yes. Uh, I also, right, I also made a status category for, uh, like, how the series is is going, or, it, like, if I plan on having it return. Oh, what the fuck is happening right now? Does this make sense? I don't know. Whatever. Um... Man, my mouth is really dry. Yeah, third strike, really good. Uh, likely return, as in I'm probably gonna go back to it eventually. That was on Fightcade. Uh, the Ultimate Doom. It's been kind of a while since I streamed that. Doom one is pretty good. I actually did finish it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Doom one is like a seven out of ten. I I don't know. I mean, I definitely recommend it, and it's pretty good. But like. I don't know. I think Quake is easier to go back to. Which, I don't know, not enough people do. Team Fortress 2 is hard to rate. How do you rate TF2? Should I rate it at, like, its peak? Or should I rate it, like, in its current state? Because, like, I think the game... TF2 was genuinely, like, a 10 out of 10, but I think... It's been dropped down to like, like a seven and a half because of the inaction from Valve. How come eight out of ten is less green than seven out of ten? Man, oh my color system is all fucked up. I think I'm just gonna have to like manually redo that. Right before the bot shit, like Jungle Inferno. That's just a 10 out of 10. It's goaded. 10 out of 10. Uh, rated without considering uh, Valve's current inaction. I don't know why I capitalized in action. Uh, do I recommend it? No. 10 out of 10, don't recommend. I Don't fucking play TF2. I don't know, whatever. Like, there's not, there's not a fucking game to play right now. Let me make my, uh, my, my camera a little bit bigger. I don't know, it's sad, but like, I don't know. Team Fortress 2 is the best game that you shouldn't play. Silent Hill 2? Uh... Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm torn. Silent Hill 2? I'm torn between 9 or 10. Really fucking good game. Silent Hill and 8? I don't know. I don't think I really disliked any part of it. It's... Maybe you're right. Well, I wish I could give it a 0.5. I, I fucking... You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna start giving things 0.5s. And I'm just gonna fix... Not 8.4. That's stupid specific. I'm gonna fix the conditional formatting later. I'm gonna start giving things 0.5s. Team Fortress 2, I actually don't think you deserve... Whoops. Uh, I don't think you deserve a 10 out of 10. Um, yes, I definitely recommend Silent Hill 2, specifically the PC port with the Enhanced Edition mod. Uh, Town of Silent Hill, the team who made that mod, fucking mind-blowing. Dude, they rewrote the game's timing to work at 60 FPS. They had to rewrite it in, like, fucking Delta time or whatever. Uh, so the game runs at 60 FPS now. It has mouse and keyboard support, which it didn't normally. 
I don't know if the game itself seemed a bit grueling at times, but streaming it was so much fun. It was the experience versus what it actually is. Uh, Team Fortress, uh, Silent Hill 2. Yeah, we're still talking about Silent Hill 2. Um, I don't know. I think, like, getting fucked up. Uh, you know what? I think the bug puzzle <laughs> brings it down a whole point and a half. The bug puzzle and, like, the hangman puzzle. Uh, no, the hangman puzzle is more straightforward. I just didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. Um, and, like, uh, the, the, the Lakeview Hotel is a little, a little jank. I don't know. It's literally just some puzzles are a little bit too obtuse. But that's just what the series is like. That, you kind of, you take it, you take the mash with the meal, you know what I'm saying? Uh, no one says that. But anyway, Pikmin, Pikmin 1... Pikmin 1, what do I, how do I feel? I don't really like Pikmin 1. 6.5 out of 10. Uh, but I do recommend it. I just don't personally like it that much. Uh, I am a big Pikmin 2 fan. Pikmin 4 is really fucking good. Pikmin 3 I didn't finish. Um, New Super Mario Bros. U. This is probably the worst one in the New Super Mario Bros. series. I am a New Super Mario Bros. 2 apologist, which is becoming more of a prevalent opinion uh, these days. New Super Mario Bros. U. It's literally a 5 out of 10. That's the most 5 out of 10 game ever. Not not really. Um, I might give it a sure, actually. Sure. Brilliant Bob. <laughs> this game is a fucking 0 out of 10. I'm sorry, Brilliant Bob. Uh, no. There, zero out of ten. Fuck, brilliant, Bob. That game sucks, dick. <laughs> Castlevania Rondo of Blood. It's good. I just don't really like classic Castlevania games that much. I'd give it like a seven point five. I, I think it's probably the best classic Castlevania platformer. Uh, I just don't really like. The, the platformers. I prefer the the Metroidvanias. Because Symphony of the Night, that shit's like 8.5 out of 10. And maybe a 9. You wish you could stay, but your friends are ready to play Fortnite? Alright, have a good night. I will... I don't know, is anyone else here anymore? Should I save this? I don't really want to do this by myself. Uh, yes, I recommend both of those. Wario Land, Shake It. Yeah. Oh, well. 4.5 out of 10. Well, I don't want to have, like, an 8-minute VOD. Alright, see you later, I guess. Uh, alright, it's just you and me, VOD viewer. So what do you think, Andy? Uh, Wario Land, Shake It. I don't really recommend it. No. Wario Land Shake It is my go-to, like, I thought this game was the shit as a kid, and then I played it as an adult, and it was fucking bad. That was, that is, that is like, Wario Land Shake It is a phrase in my head that encapsulates that feeling. Um, I can't listen to this on stream, I don't think. Uh... Now this one's a fucking banger. Alright, let's see. Pizza Tower. That is a fucking like 9 out of 10 game. Uh, yes, absolutely recommend. I don't really have much to say about that. Um, do I? Pizza Tower was one of my favorite games of last year. But last year, fuck a lot of good games came out. I, you don't need me to tell you that. But uh, a lot of good-ass games came out last year. Pizza Tower was one of them. One of my favorite indie games in years. And I'm like... I play mostly indie games. 
these days. Um, I don't know. It's just a lot of... It's charming as fuck. You know this. You've seen fucking Pizza Tower. It's everywhere. The gameplay is great. Uh, I don't know. It, it's so good. Super Metroid... I don't know if Super Metroid has aged particularly well. I think this is a game that needs a remake. Like, if they got Mercury Steam to remake Super Metroid for the Switch, I would buy that shit day one. Like, instant cop. Super Metroid as is on the Super Nintendo, I can't get past certain... Not I, not, I can't get past as in I get stuck in the game. I can't get past certain design choices, I guess. It's like... I don't know. I know it's a good game, but I think it just hasn't aged the best. So, and like a... Everyone's gonna shit on me, but it's like a... Like a 6 out of 10. I also didn't even beat the game. I still recommend it. Resident Evil 4 Original. I don't know. Not much to say about that. 8 out of 10. It's a good game. Uh, that's another game that I just didn't beat for no reason. Um... I have a big habit of dropping games on stream. Resident Evil 4, the original one, I've said it before, this shit is a turn-based third-person shooter. It's not an action game. It is fucking turn-based, and you won't tell me otherwise. Um, I don't know, it's fun. It's kind of... It's standard, but it's also like the... F it, it, it's very standard in its genre, but it also created kind of the genre of like that slow linear third person over the shoulder shooter the fucking dead space the like i don't know almost the last of us i want to say kind of is was even influenced by it um obviously it set the gold standard for that and then resident evil 4 remake fucking came in and did it better in my opinion i love both games I would rather pick up a copy. I would rather pick up the controller, and by controller I mean mouse and keyboard, don't fucking play it on controller, and play uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake any day over the original. It's just the controls of the original, and I like, I kinda, I don't know, I appreciate some parts of the tone. Let me switch songs. I appreciate some of like the tone of the original and some of the funnier set pieces and maybe some of the writing of the original but i just think the gameplay takes precedent over that i don't know uh resident evil 4 remake it's a good ass game that was i think maybe my game of the year last year maybe pizza tower was my game of the year but i i like pizza tower and resident evil 4 remake were like neck and neck if not tied neck and neck means tied does it i don't know fucking whatever my <laughs> my house two dot wad uh you may have heard of my house dot wad probably haven't heard of my house two dot wad that's <laughs> that's because they're completely fucking different things uh my house two dot wad imagine if you will you know what my house dot wad is if you don't uh, go watch someone else stream that. Don't watch me stream it, or just go play it yourself. Pause the video, play myhouse.wad, go to fucking, like, the Doomseeker forums or whatever that you get it from, download that, play it, come back, get the ending, get the good ending, and then come back. Um, and you'll realize myhouse2.wad is... Imagine the premise of my house wad of oh this is just some guy's house and you're going through and it's a little cute and it's kind of shitty well i mean my house wad is actually really nice looking my house dot my house two dot wad i downloaded the wrong fucking wad and i streamed it <laughs> and it sucks it's like a fucking one out of ten it's not even a good like house recreation i don't i can't envision the house that he lives in it's literally just some guy's fucking house and i've streamed it by accident uh, no. This is not the right wad. <laughs> uh, myhouse.wad, though, 
<clears throat> I guess I'm rating this one on a scale of 1 to 10 of like the best Doom wads I've ever played, which I haven't played that many, I'll be honest with you. But even like... My house dot wad is like, if you want a really short, like, Silent Hill sequel, like, like one of the good ones, play that fucking game. It's still just watching it will give me that kind of like, like eyes over my shoulder feeling of like I'm being watched. Uh, it's fucking really, really good. It's like nine out of 10 only because I kind of think I think the fact that parts of it expect you to actually do Doom Combat is at odds with what the rest of the theme of the WAD is. Not not thematically, but like, the rest of the WAD is like, exploration and mystery and puzzle solving. And then, at points it just expects you to do normal Doom Combat, and I think that's a little bit... It's asking two different of things from the player. Which is a thing that I think about a lot in games. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, it's like how, how Silent Hill kind of has... Oh, you're still here, Akru? Hi. Thank God I wasn't just talking to myself. <laughs> um, it's like how Silent Hill's boss fights always feel kind of weird. Because it's not a game made for combat. I know Doom is... Oh, you just got back from soaking your shoes? What the fuck? The psycho? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Anyway, uh, Noida. Noida's pretty good. Uh, I haven't played that much of it. I want to say like eight. Or like seven and a half. I know seven and a half is like... I don't know, it's good. I, I play games that are good, but not many things break that kind of, like, average of good. You know? Binding of Isaac Repentance, that shit is a 10 out of 10. Yes. Uh, repentance really... Repentance is such a good... And I'm ranking, like, Rebirth with all of the DLCs. And I guess I'm kind of specifically also talking about the Repentance DLC on its own. Uh, or, like, what it added to the full package. Rebirth is a good game on its own. It's a little content light comparatively now, because it's more or less just, like... It's kind of just a remake of, like, Wrath of the Lamb Edition Flash Isaac with another, like, content pack added in, right? And then Afterbirth was just another little DLC. Afterbirth Plus was a even smaller DLC with mod support, and then repentance is like holy fuck that's where you get your money repentance is i think the best dlc of any game i've ever played it doubles the amount of characters it adds like hundreds of room layouts it adds new enemies it adds a fucking second path through the game it's i mean it's it's the anti-birth uh mod made by team penis <laughs> uh i think that's what they're called um but, like, turned into an official DLC and then made even bigger than that. It's so fucking good. And it made the mod support even better. It's, like, a 10 out of 10, like, classic, like, games of all time for me. Like, literally the GOAT. <laughs> fucking... It is something that I return to all the goddamn time. Absolutely recommend. I would, I would recommend it more if it weren't so expensive to get Repentance. Because you have to get Rebirth and Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus and Repentance. That's like 50 or 60 bucks, which sure, that's what you get a full price AAA game for. And I guess it's worth it. I would say it's worth it. Don't let the price point, like, dissuade you. Dissuade? Yeah. Uh, gimmick. I didn't play too much of Gimmick. I think I'm going to give this one an N.A. I I played Gimmick for like 10 minutes or something. I don't even know if the VOD is still up. Tears of the Kingdom I didn't finish, but I got like 90% of the way through the story. I'm so conflicted on Tears of the Kingdom. On one hand, 
the systems are so good in, uh, in Tears of the Kingdom, but I think it wasn't enough of an upgrade from Breath of the Wild. Like, it's Breath of the Wild with Gary's Mod tools, and that's cool until you, like, kind of get complacent with the systems and you stop being... Because, like, there's kind of also this grind element of, like, you don't have limitless tools because it's a fucking adventure game. The world itself wasn't as engaging. That's exactly right. What happened to my background? <laughs> Hello? Where'd my background go? Uh, hold on a second. Um, device not connected. What the fuck? Did my TV just die or something? What happened? Um, yeah. Honestly, that's it. Okay, I got the background back. <laughs> Zelda heard me talking about it. Um, it just, I didn't have any drive to rediscover that world because they didn't add enough. Like, they didn't add a whole new world's worth of stuff in its place. They only changed, like, 40, like, 40-ish 40 percent of, like, because, like, let's not pretend that part of Breath of the Wild's exploration isn't discovering, like, literally the geography of the map. Like... The stuff on top of the dirt and the soil is only, like, half of it. And, like, climbing the same mountain again, like, climbing dueling peaks in Tears of the Kingdom is, like, whatever. I've already fucking climbed this mountain. I don't, I don't really care. I don't know. It, it failed to make me care about it as much as Breath of the Wild did. It, I think it's, like, Tinker Toys gimmick kind of got old after after a little while after an extended play session um <coughs> i do think a lot of it is cool though that's why i'm so torn because the counterpoint to my criticisms is also it's fucking tears of the kingdom it's so good but there's just some parts and like they didn't really address weapon durability which i didn't think they were going to because that's kind of a core part of the gameplay loop but they also made it so that a lot of the weapons are just fucking basically unusable even in their full state. Like, the rusty weapons or whatever. And the way to clean them is fucking so obscure and few and far between. I don't know. I'm still gonna give it a 7. But that's like a divisive 7. <laughs> and I'd recommend it. Sure. It's a lot of people's game of the year. Street Fighter 6. God damn it. I'm going to have another extended rant about this one. Street Fighter 6. The game itself. Phenomenal. It launched in a really good state. And it should have. It should have moved from that just after launch state. After like a month. And it's been like six months. And it's still kind of, it feels exactly the same way it did at launch. It, it's kind of currently in my mind, the king of the post-launch fuck up. If you've been paying attention to Street Fighter 6, there's the $15 Ninja Turtle costumes. Uh, four costumes, one of each Ninja Turtle, $15 each. That's fucking absurd. Uh... They added new costumes for every character, and you have to buy the in-game currency. And the most cost-effective way to get a costume is if you buy enough currency for exactly two costumes, which is more money than you're, than a lot of people were willing to put in. If you buy all of the costumes in the game, it's gonna run you like a hundred bucks. Uh, like, USD. And as a Canadian, that's even more for me. So, it's just... And like... The first wave of DLC doesn't look that good. It's I'm gonna I'm gonna put a note here. Uh will return when more content releases. But the base systems, like the gameplay, I'm just gonna uh 
rated based on gameplay and presentation at launch. Six for six. I don't. I wouldn't even put it that low, though. I was thinking that, but like, if I'm not considering the post-launch, I think it's still like an eight out of ten. Ah, eh, like a seven point five again. I this seven point five new consideration is because um I don't like the aesthetic. I don't like the art style. I was I feel like I may have been coping a little bit when it first got shown off like oh it's still like a good art style it's just rendered more realistically. My problem with it now is that it's holding back so much. My big one of my biggest complaints about Street Fighter 6 is they they went so detailed with the art style that it's literally holding back everything. It's the fucking King of Fighters excuse me. It's the King of Fighters 12 problem where that game looks so insane that the graphics held back everything else in the pipeline. And that's happening again for Street Fighter 6. Costumes are coming out slow. We It's been six months and we've gotten one additional costume and it's not even, I think, out for the DLC characters. Um, like, we only just got one teaser trailer for the second to last DLC character of the first wave. Just shit is coming out slow. And the like the corporate hip hop aesthetic, so fucking, it's gross. I wanna say it's gross. Street Fighter 3 really was the king of like counterculture hip hop aesthetic in even like real or not. In terms of like the the undergroundness, this is still a fucking corporate product. But Third Strike really nailed the vibe of it at least, and like Street Fighter Six is like that TikTok of like when you're at the gym without your headphones. You know what I'm talking about? Fucking the Scooby Dooby Doo and shit. Uh, what is? I don't even remember what he says in that. But like that's the vibe that game gives me off in terms of its like aesthetic. Uh... No, I'm giving this game a sure. Sure in this case meaning if you're willing to put up with the pricing. Because I honestly don't think it's a great value for your money. I mean, it's got a whole like single player campaign, but I've heard it's not that great. Pikmin 4, fucking 9 out of 10. Pikmin 4 is great. Uh, I didn't finish it, but I got most of the way through. Uh, Pikmin 4 is, like, probably my second favorite. It might be my favorite. I'm not quite sure where Pikmin 2 and 4 rank. Um, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Final Mix gets an NA for me. I gave up. That game is stupid hard for a game made for babies. <laughs> uh... I played on normal mode and I couldn't get past the first boss. It's also a problem of just scheduling. I wanted to play that with, I wanted that to be like a Lauren and Taylor series. I wanted to play that with Taylor, but they are not available for one reason or another. I don't know if I should, I don't know if I have their permission to disclose it, fucking whatever. But uh, yeah, they're not available. So those streams will not continue, sorry. Sporkle. Fuck, I forgot what Sporkle was for a second. Um, how the fuck do you rank Sporkle? That shit is online quizzes. Sporkle, Sporkle's fucking... I don't know. I don't know how you would rank it. That's getting another NA. Doom 2 Hell on Earth. Like 4.5 out of 10. I'm sorry. Doom 2... Doom 2, I hate the level design so much. It's just not great. I don't know. The level design holds it back so much. Like, there's that one part that's like, I think it's like tricks and traps and then dead simple and then like something else, like back to back to back. 
God, I hate... I just... It's like... It's literally like... Doom the Lost Levels. Like, where they replaced some of the good parts with just, like, bullshit. Like, oh, it's harder because it's, you know, unconventional and weirdly experimental. I don't know. Uh, GeoGuessr, 7.5 out of 10. Yes, I get. um... N sure, because you have to fucking pay a subscription fee to play GeoGuessr nowadays. Well, no, you can play it for free, but only for five minutes a day. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, I also didn't finish. Uh, also, I'm gonna replace Silent Hill 3 is missing in action with a gave up, because honestly, I'm not going back to that. Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I really like it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, Mario Wonder, I really like it, but I still don't know if I'd put it above... Uh, maybe like a 9 out of 10. I want to say 8.5 or 9. Nintendo is the king of 8.5s. Really good, but never like monumental masterpieces. They're past that. They they started the game and they don't really have to prove themselves anymore, you know? And I'm fine with that. Fucking the guys who made Mario 3 and Mario World and Mario 2 and Mario 1 and fucking Sunshine and Galaxy and shit, they don't have to make 10 out of 10 Marios anymore. As long as I get something new, I'm I'm kind of happy with that. And like maybe that's like a consumer type take, but fucking whatever. It's an 8.5. It's really good. It's really fresh from what we had been getting. Uh, but it's still ultimately kind of just a new Super Mario Brothers game with a fresh coat of paint to, to steal the opinion of Grayfruit. What the fuck? Thank you for the follow. Very cool. I'm fucking doing a spreadsheet right now. Hi. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's. The first one. I played it for Halloween. I dressed up real cute in my little night guard costume. That was awesome. You should watch that VOD if you haven't. That's a very fun one. Um, I think... I genuinely think... The only thing holding the game back is its controls. And I know that the controls is part of the difficulty and part of the, the horror. But... It just kind of sucks to play. Like... It's like a light gun game, almost. I don't know. Um, and it doesn't work well at all on modern PCs. Like, it, it it runs at most 720p. And if you have multiple monitors, you're flicking to the very edges of your screen to, like, look left and right. And it doesn't lock your mouse into the window. Like, you will be clicking on shit on your other monitors if it's in the middle monitor um so i don't know technical for technical reasons i don't know 7.5 out of 10 uh, i also just i don't really love the gameplay but yeah i don't know it's iconic silent hill 3 it's like a five i don't know i shouldn't i shouldn't rate a game that i gave up on silent hill 3 my problem is just it didn't have the balance of silent hill 2 it didn't have, like... The, the characters is what I missed the most. Silent Hill 2 had fucking Eddie, it had Angela, it had James, it had fucking Louise, whatever the fuck the kid's name was. Uh, you had Maria. Like, there were all these characters, and there was, like, the town to explore. In Silent Hill 3, it's just Heather, and she's just going through some run-down shit. And you never get to, to like, leave go outside it kind of was just disappointing i don't know i'm not gonna rate it but i would give it i don't know kind of a middling super mario funny rpg that shit is a 15 out of 10 know what i'm saying uh absolutely recommend yes <laughs> that's a that's a little game made by uh stupid shorts they have a uh, itch.io page uh the link to that is in the vod description uh Half-Life 1. It's gotta be like a like an 8 out of 10. I, I want to give it more. I don't know, maybe an 8.5. It's literally just... Some of the chapters haven't aged the 
the most and it's literally just the ones that people say you should do we've got hostiles skip you should not play past the start of zen don't just just turn off the game after zen in my opinion um <clears throat> on a rail can suck my dick but like some of the chapters like fucking office complex uh questionable ethics so good it genuinely like i don't know it's just really good you know i don't need to tell you that half-life one is good <laughs> fucking it's yes i recommend it especially after the 25th anniversary patch lethal company fucking good ass game good ass game made by a solo dev really good oh damn psycho soldier main theme I love that fucking sound. <laughs> I'm actually probably gonna get copyright struck for this song, so I'm gonna move on. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's all my games ranked. So we're up to date currently. Very cool, and I need to fix... ...this... ...eventually. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, thanks for showing up. Uh, this is technically part of the other... This is technically a part of the spreadsheets VOD, so I'm not gonna make the outro too long. But yeah, thank you for showing up for the end of Dark Souls, and for spreadsheet update, I guess, also. Next up, um, Bloodborne. Probably not going to stream anything between this and Bloodborne. I'm probably going to start Bloodborne this Sunday. So be there for that. That game, you're going to see. I guess you're going to have to wait until the spreadsheet to, to find out my opinion of that game. Maybe I think it's a 0 out of 10. Maybe I think it's worse than Brilliant Bob. <laughs> um, no, but I don't know. It's, it's a good fucking game. You know. You know that it's one of the best games ever made, literally. Um... So yeah, come see me play that this Sunday. That'll be awesome. And I hope you have a good night. I hope you think about what makes you smile in this world. And I hope you think about cool video games. Uh, I don't know. Relish the shit you enjoy. And drink some water. Okay? Have a good night. I'll see you later. Goodbye.